A point is a location. We often represent points using dots. Points have no width, length, or height. We usually label points with capital letters. So here's three dots, and they all represent points, which also means they represent locations on our flat surface. And now we've labeled the three points with capital letters L, S, and C. A line is difficult to define. Here's a definition I like. A line is a set of collinear points extending infinitely in both directions. But my definition has a problem. Look at the word collinear highlighted in red. Collinear comes from the word line. So essentially, I've used the form of a word to define a word. That's called a circular definition. And we normally don't like that in our definitions. But you can go to the web, you can go to math books, you can go to dictionaries and look up the word line, and you'll be hard-pressed to find a real specific non-circular definition for the word. A line is one of those things. We have a hard time defining it, but we know one when we see one. Lines have infinite length, but they do not have width or height. Here's a picture of a line. We put arrows on the end to show that a line extends in two directions infinitely. Often you'll see a script lowercase letter, often an L is used, and that's a way to label the line, and we would call this line L. Now I've chosen two points on the line, placed dots there, and labeled them M and A. There's infinite points to pick from, I just happen to have chosen these two. And just because I put dots there doesn't mean that they're larger than the rest, because points have no height, width, or length. They're simply locations. So I've just chosen two points on the line, and I can use those two points to label the line as shown. I can label it MA or AM, and I put the little symbol that looks like a line over the two capital letters, and we read... The first one is line MA, and the second one is line AM, but they're both labels for the same line. If I add a third point, I can get four more ways to label this line. I pick any two of the three letters and put them in any order. Don't use three letters to label a line. And if I pick a fourth point, I get six more ways to label this line. Once again, I pick any two of the four, doesn't matter which two, and I can go in either order. All 12 of the labels that use two capital letters are labels for the same line, and then our top label that uses the lowercase l is a 13th way to label this line. A line segment is a part of a line that includes two points and all the points on the line between the two points. Line segments have length, but they do not have width or height. Now we go back to what looks like a slide we just looked at, but you may notice the difference. Instead of a little picture of a line on top of all the pairs of capital letters, it's simply a bar, and that means segment. So the one in the upper left corner would be read as segment MA, and the next one would be read segment MT. So what we have here are 12 different labels for a variety of different segments. For the line, all 12 labels labeled the same line. So let's break it down and see which segments are labeled. Those two labels that are colored red label the red segment that runs for M to A. And you can label that segment in either order. You can go A to M or M to A. Two labels for the same segment. Here's two that are in blue that label the segment that runs from M to T, or if you prefer, from T to M. And here's one that runs from M to H, shown in red. For a segment, the label should have just two letters, and those two letters should be the labels for the endpoints of the segment. So there's a segment we haven't looked at yet from A to T. There's one from A to H. And finally, a smaller segment from T to H. And sometimes we picture segments all by themselves without showing the lines that they're part of. The lines there, we just chose not to put it in our picture. 
And then we can label the endpoints, in this case P and S, and this segment can be labeled as PS or SP. A ray is a point on a line and all of the points of the line on one side of the point. Rays have infinite length, but they do not have width or height. Once again, we go back to a frame. It looks like we've seen before, but notice now, instead of a picture of a line over the pairs of letters or a bar, it's an arrow with an arrow just on one end instead of two. And of course, that's the symbol for ray because ray starts at a point and goes on infinitely in one direction. But once again, all 12 of these labels do not label the same ray. So let's break it down. There's a ray that starts at M and runs up and to the right. We call that MA, or we could call it MT or MH. We start our label with the end point of the ray, in this case the M, and then we can pick any one of the letters in our picture that's on the side of M where our ray is extending. So there's three different ways to label this ray in this picture. Here's a ray that starts at A and goes up and to the right, and there's two ways to label that based on what we have in our picture. Now here's a ray that starts at A and goes in the other direction, and there's only one way to label it based on what we have in the picture. And by the way, there's a ray that starts at M and goes down and to the left, but we don't have anything in our picture that allows us to label that ray. Here's a green ray that starts at T and runs down and to the left. Two ways to label that and another ray that starts at T that runs up and to the right, just one way to label that. And our final ray that we can label starts at H and goes down and to the left. And the ray that starts at H and goes up and to the right exists, but we cannot label it based on the information shown in our diagram. Here's a picture of a ray all by itself. We have the end point and then the part of the line that goes out in one of the directions. And we can add another point so that we can label it. And we're going to call our new point A, and our end point is R. And there's only one way to label this ray, RA. Our label always starts with the end point and then uses the point on the other side as the next point in the label. Our label always goes from left to right with the end point first, but the ray can go in any direction that you want. An angle is two rays with a common endpoint. The common endpoint is the vertex of the angle. There's a picture of an angle. For labeling purposes, we'll put two points, one on each side of the angle. And then we'll label each of the points, including the common endpoint. And we can call this angle XYZ as shown. We could also call it angle ZYX as shown. And if we just use the vertex point of the angle, Angle Y is good enough. There's no confusion. If you just use one letter, you may use the vertex in a diagram such as this. Sometimes there'll be a number there. And then we can call it angle 1. Now we've added a ray. And angle 1 and angle 2 are adjacent angles because they share a side. And the side, of course, is ray YX. We've highlighted the first angle we looked at in red. It can still be labeled angle XYZ or angle ZYX and also angle 1, but we can no longer use the label angle Y because with the addition of ray YW, if we call it angle Y, there would be ambiguity. It would not be clear whether angle Y meant angle 1, angle 2, or the two angles combined. Here's another angle that we can label from this picture. It's highlighted in green, and we can label it angle XYW, angle WYX, or angle 2. And finally, here's an angle highlighted in blue. It's combining angles 1 and 2. And the only labels that work here are angle ZYW or angle WYZ. A polygon is a closed plane figure bounded by line segments. A polygon with three sides is a triangle. So here's our original three points. If we connect these points, as shown, we have a triangle. We can label the triangle with a little symbol that looks like a triangle, and then we start with any one of the three points. I chose S, and we can go in either direction, so I call this triangle SCL. I could also go in the other direction to label it, SLC. 
I could also start at the letter L and go in either direction, or I could start at the letter C and go in either direction. Six ways to label this triangle. The triangle has three sides. Each side is a segment. And there are the labels for the three segments. We could also reverse the letters in each of the segment labels. And then the triangle has three angles. Angle L, angle C, and angle S. We could use the three letter method if we wanted, but it's not necessary. It's pretty clear which angle I'm talking about when I say angle L. And while the angles are made up of segments with a common endpoint instead of rays with a common endpoint, they're still angles because remember, all of those segments are subsets of rays. The rays are there. We just chose not to put them in our picture. So two segments can also make an angle. And finally, we say that points L, S, and C are the vertices of the triangle. In this lesson, we looked at points, lines, line segments, rays, angles, and triangles.